Viaiwei under British rule. Viaiwei, in the northeast of China, was a leased territory of the United Kingdom from 1898 until 1930. The capital was Port Edward. The leased territory covered and included the walled city of Port Edward, Bay of Wei Highway, Lu Kung Tao Island and a mainland area of the coastline running to a depth of inland. Together with La Shunko, it controlled the entrance to the Gulf of Zhili and, thus, the seaward approaches to Beijing. Background to the British lease The port of Viaiwei was the base for the Beiyang fleet during the Qing dynasty. In 1895, the Japanese captured it in the Battle of Viaiwei, the last major battle of the First Sino-Japanese War. The Japanese withdrew in 1898, after the Russian Empire leased Port Arthur from China for 25 years in March 1898. The United Kingdom pressured the Chinese government into leasing Viaiwei, with the terms of the treaty stating that it would remain in force for as long as the Russians were allowed to occupy Port Arthur. The port was primarily used as a summer anchorage for the Royal Navy's China Station, and it was also used as a health resort. It served as a port of call for ships of the Royal Navy in the Far East. Certain aspects of the administration are directly pertaining to military matters were left under Chinese control, and the port itself remained a free port until 1923. At the start of the Russo-Japanese War, the commander of China Station was ordered to withdraw his ships from Viaiwei to avoid the possibility that Britain would be drawn into the war. However, fearing that Viaiwei would be used as a safe haven by the Imperial Russian Navy, the Japanese government pressured the British to return their fleet. The port was of importance as a telegraph and radio transmission station for war correspondents covering the conflict, and was also a source of contraband shipping by blockade runners bringing supplies into Port Arthur. In 1905, after Japanese victory in the Russo-Japanese War, Japan took over Port Arthur. The British lease was extended to last for as long as the Japanese occupied Port Arthur. British rule in Viaiwei Commissioner of Viaiwei 1902-1921 at the beginning of the lease. The territory was administered by a senior naval officer of the Royal Navy, Sir Edward Hobart Seymour. In 1899, administration was transferred to a military and civil commissioner, firstly Arthur Dorwood, then John Dodson Daintree appointed by the War Office in London. The territorial garrison consisted of 200 British troops, and a specially constituted Viaiwei Regiment, officially the first Chinese regiment, with British officers. In 1901, it was decided that this base should not be fortified, and administration was transferred to the Colonial Office. A civil commissioner was appointed in February 1902 to administer the territory. The post was held by Sir James Haldane Stuart Lockhart until 1921. After Lockhart, Arthur Powlett Blunt and Walter Russell Brown were appointed commissioners in Viaiwei. The last commissioner was the outstanding sinologist Reginald Fleming Johnston who served from 1927. To 1930. In 1909, the Hong Kong governor Sir Frederick Lugard proposed that Britain return Viaiwei to Chinese rule in return for perpetual rule of the new territories of Hong Kong, which had also been leased in 1898. This proposal was never adopted. Viaiwei was not developed in the way that Hong Kong and other British colonies in the region were. This was because Shandong province, of which Vi Aiwei was part, was inside Germany's sphere of influence. It was normal practice for British colonies to be administered under the provisions of the British Settlements Act 1887. 
However, Viwe was actually administered under the Foreign Jurisdiction Act 1890, which was the law which granted extraterritorial powers over British subjects in China and other countries where Britain had extraterritorial rights. The reason for this was that as a leased territory, subject to rendition at any time, it was not considered appropriate to treat Viwe as a full colony. No special postage stamps were ever issued for Viwe. Just as in the treaty ports, Hong Kong stamps were used. From 1917, these were overprinted with the word China. Revenue stamps of Viwe were issued from 1921. There were never any special coins or banknotes issued for circulation in Viwe. The various currencies in circulation in China at the time were used. The Hong Kong dollar was also used as well. The nickname British sailors gave to this port was Wei Hai. It was also referred to as Port Edward in English. During British rule, residences, hospital, churches, tea houses, sports ground, post office, and naval cemetery were constructed. Army and police the Viwe Regiment was formed in 1898 with LT. Colonel Hamilton Bauer as its first commanding officer and served in the Boxer Rebellion. The regiment was ordered to be totally disbanded in 1906 by Army Order No. 127 of 1906. Some of the soldiers were retained as a permanent police force with three British color sergeants, commissioned as police inspectors. In 1910 the police force comprised three European inspectors and 55 Chinese constables. Previously, the force had comprised one Chinese sergeant and seven constables under a district officer. During World War I the British recruited the Chinese Labour Corps in Viwe to assist the war effort. During the Seamen Strike of 1922 in Hong Kong, the colonial government sent two European police officers to Viwe in September of that year to recruit the first of about 50 Viwe men as Royal Hong Kong Police Constables. After completing six months' training in Viwe, the recruits were posted to Hong Kong to maintain law and order in March 1923. The Viwe policemen were known as the D contingent in the HKP and their service numbers were prefixed with letter D to differentiate them from the European A, Indian, B and Cantonese, C. At the end of 1927, the Chinese police were replaced by Indians. High Court In 1903, the British established a High Court of Viwe. The judges of the court were chosen from individuals serving as a judge a crown advocate of the British Supreme Court for China in Shanghai. The three judges of the court from 1903 to 1930 were Frederick Samuel Augustus Bourne, assistant judge of HBM Supreme Court for China Hiram Parks Wilkinson, crown advocate of HBM Supreme Court for China Peter Grain, Assistant Judge, and from 1927, Judge of HBM Supreme Court for China the Commissioner could also exercise judicial powers if the judges of the court were not available. Appeals from the High Court for Viwe could be made to the Hong Kong Supreme Court. It appears that no appeal was ever heard in Hong Kong. Initially, the Crown Advocate for China, Hiram Parks Wilkinson served as the Crown Advocate for Viwe. When Wilkinson was appointed judge in 1916, Alan Mossop took over as Crown Advocate for Viwe. Mossop later became Crown Advocate for China in 1926. Return of Viwe Viwe was returned to Chinese rule on 1 October 1930. However, 
The Chinese government leased the island of Liu Kungtao to the Royal Navy for 10 years, coming to an end on the 11th of November 1940 following a Japanese military landing on 1 October 1940. Vi Iwei became a special administrative region after it was returned to the Republic of China. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.